Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I want to reiterate the point that I am just so thankful for how you've all invited me into your homes and into your hearts. And I want to give you a very special gift on this very special holiday. Alpha and Omega, the big furries. Oh yeah, because this horrible franchise still demands two more movies somehow, here we go. The Big Furries. First of all, great job ripping off the title from Land Before Time 8. I guess since you're already being accused of becoming the new Land Before Time, why not steal their titles? Secondly, I do love how they gave us a title with as awkward a pronunciation as possible. The Big Furries? Just rolls off the tongue, don't it? Now you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna call it The Big Furries. At least that brings some interesting visuals to mind. And speaking of... <sighs> there we are. On to the review. Thirdly, why furries? Yes, the wolves are covered in fur, but why work that into the title? Is their fur gonna freeze off? Is it gonna get so cold that everything that doesn't have fur will suddenly grow fur in order to cope? Are we gonna see killer snowmen wearing wolf skins? This is like calling a movie Skinception just because it stars non-furry human beings. But hey, at least it's not gonna have a T-Rex doing a dance number, right? Right? Before the movie begins, I feel it necessary to point out that this movie was supposed to be the sixth in the series, but they pushed it back to be seventh in line while Dino Diggs was rushed to be the sixth. They wanted to make sure that this movie was the one with all the spit and polish put into it, so I'm sure it's going to be just terrific! We open on a lovely winter day in Jasper National Park, where we see a squirrel ripping off Scrat from the Ice Age movies. Then he runs into an obvious trap. Run, squirrel, run! Adult growls. Try all you want, movie. You can't make these things seem intimidating. Okay, sis and bro, we are officially in hot pursuit. <laughs> I'm sorry, what is it they said in the last movie regarding all critters? We're very accepting of all critters. Take note, kids. The key to accepting people for who they are is by chasing them down and eating them. Do the spin out, Pothead! <laughs> One, don't do the spin out. It's completely unnecessary. Two, that's not the spin out. If anything, it's more like a pirouette. Squirrel man, how did you know I was a gamer? Better question. Shut up! You don't know what a gamer is. How did you know I was a gamer? Let the future leader of the pack take a stab at this. Said the wolf pup who has never done anything relatively leader-ish. Listen, my fine furry. That's not a fine furry. This is a fine furry. Ah, uh, Zigzag makes it all better. You're making us work way too hard for our meal. Come on, be nice. It's the holidays. Yay. <laughs> It is the holidays, so give us a tasty food basket. Hooray! Our cute, adorable protagonists are running a protection racket. And this movie is taking place during the holidays again? Good to know that these filmmakers are so starved for ideas that they need to make two Christmas movies, neither of which have anything to do with Christmas. I thought we were friends. Yeah, the same way you're friends with an acorn. We're very accepting of all critters. Hugger to the rescue! <laughs> what the heck? A wolf that can climb a tree? I've been saying that for six movies now! The squirrel gets away after pointing out that there's a bad storm a coming, which worries Runt. I think I know why Mom and Dad are so late getting back home! So do I. They either abandon your ugly asses, or the writers couldn't figure out how to write them into their own franchise again. They go back to their cave to tell their grandparents that they need to find their mom and dad. I'm just counting the seconds it takes for the kids to run off on their own despite their grandparents insisting that they stay home because we all know it's coming. As the future leader of the pack, I ask that you let me lead the rescue squad. No wolf is heading into the eye of that storm. This is serious. The last time a storm like this hit, half the animal population was wiped out. Half of the animal population was wiped out, huh? 
Who knew that Canada was that much of a death trap? We can time it. Find places to burrow when the wind kicks up, then run hard when it dies. <laughs> Look at that. Their grandparents are such non-entities to them, there's not even any kind of break in his speech when Winston grabs him. A stammer? A stutter? Anything to show that they're actually there? And then run hard at- Hey, put me down! I wasn't finished! How are you going to find burrows in this weather? Half of them will be buried in the snow or taken by bears. I can make friends with almost any animal! Which has what to do with your ability to find burrows? I can make friends with almost any animal! Sheesh, not even Claudette can take that response seriously. Yes, I know, Runt. You can make friends with almost any animal. Good for you. When you have an answer to Grandpa Winston's question, feel free to get back to me. Any sign of Uncle Marcel or Patty? Why would you even consider them an option? They're supposed to be migrating south for the winter! This is their flight path. We know that because our Aunt Lily taught us everything about flight patterns. No, of course they're still here instead of having left before winter came, because them flying south for the winter would make too much sense, and Lord knows we can't have anything make sense in these movies. Oh, run! Hi! Look out! Good it! Duck! Literally! Ha 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 ha. You are so funny, it's unbelievable. We jump back to the cave, where we can see that they actually took the time to make Holly that looks kind of like Holly, as opposed to the Holly in movie 2, which was just a wreath made of daisies. Isn't this festive? Yes, we have Holly and snow. All that is missing is a feast. I wish I had something to <clears throat> eat for us. Oh sure, it's up to you to eat on behalf of the entire pack, pig. Marcel and Patty. You'll do! Aren't you two supposed to have migrated? We missed our flight. How do you miss your flight? You decide when you fly! How do you miss your flight? You are made of stupid. We heard about Kate and Humphrey. They are going to help us. Of course they're going to help you. Your grandparents told you no, and these enablers are complete pushovers. Being defiant to your guardians is such a non-issue that you can just throw your defiance all over the table with the knowledge that they're not going to do a damn thing to stop you. Have I said how much I really hate these kids? You two rock. And I'm sorry, I know I should be used to this by now, but fuck this. Why the hell can't they keep the pup's eyes focused in the same direction for more than a few seconds? Take one eye, point it somewhere, take the other eye, and point it at the same somewhere! This isn't rocket science, people! You're both such a dish. Such a dish. Grandma, what nice teeth you have. Sure, why not? Got any huffing and puffing jokes to throw at us while you're at it? Later, as the snowstorm continues to blow during a perfectly clear night, we find Kate Humph taking refuge in a cave with a perfectly square entrance. Apparently, we're back in Wolf Burbia. We should have known this is why the caribou haven't come back. Yeah, you really should have. You're supposed to be the ultimate alpha. Why are you lost and empty-handed as if this was your first day on the job? Oh, come on, Kate. Who can predict the caribou? You're supposed to predict the caribou. You're supposed to be this amazing, mighty hunter who's always stalking your prey at every turn, learning where they go, exploiting their weaknesses, all for the betterment of you and your pack. Why are you so bad at this? I'm worried about the pups. Winston and Eve will look after them. You know how the pups are. They'll get worried about us and do something foolish like try and find us. Or they'll just get bored and wander off for no reason whatsoever. Seriously, Kate, you should not have been allowed to breed. Okay, let's take worst case scenario. They still have all our best instincts for surviving... disasters. True. You have taught Runt how to be a great Omega. The importance of fun and being social. As is indicated by him constantly taking initiative, wanting to go on hunts, constantly leaving the pack, and not paying attention to any of the internal conflicts, Humphrey has done nothing to teach him about being an Omega! What, you don't believe me? Let's look at this flashback, which is supposed to show us Humphrey teaching Runt the ins and outs of being an Omega. Boo! Nice move, Humphrey. Thanks to your being fun and social, 
You single-handedly scared off the entire herd! <gasps> oh no, my mistake! Thanks to your being fun and social, you caused yet another stampede and got the rest of your pack trampled! Good job! And why is Lily hanging out with the twins? Oh my god, someone's creepy fanfiction snuck its way into the script! Oh, I'm so lonely with my husband being away on an extended hunting trip. Don't worry, Lily. We'll keep you company. Oh no, that won't be necessary. My nephew Runt will be here any minute so he can get me pregnant again. Oh dear sweet god, do I wish I was making that up. Now it's Humphrey's turn to lie to Kate about how good a mother she is. You've always shown Stinky and Claudette good alpha training. Strength without bullying. <laughs> Yeah, you really did a bang-up job teaching of that, didn't you? <laughs> Listen, my fine furry. You're making us work way too hard for our meal. Come on, be nice. It's the holidays. Yay. <laughs> it is the holidays, so give us a tasty food basket. The caribou leave and suddenly I'm chopped liver? I'm afraid so. I thought we were friends. Yeah, the same way you're friends with an acorn. And I'm sorry, Humphrey, but you are in no position to be advocating for anti-bullying when the very first interaction between you and Garth was you being a colossal dick. Wow, oh, you are a... you are a big one, aren't you? Wow, you're, uh, practically a moose. <laughs> Where are you hiding the mantlers? Okay, Stinky and Claudette, being a strong alpha means being a good hunter, but we use our strength to provide, never to push our power around. Hey, Kate, we're here to hunt. Can you take Sunday school to another field? Link, Lyle, I'm training the pups today. You'll have to wait till later. Um, I think actual hunting takes priority over practice hunting, so... Yeah, great job not pushing your power around, Kate. Maybe now would be a good time for Humphrey to show up and demonstrate to Runt how to break up an alpha-on-alpha -alpha dispute? After their self-delusions, Kate Humphrey realizes who lives in this cave. Wild berries, anyone? Oh, where'd you find those? They were in the back of the cave. Wait a minute, bears store berries in caves. No, they don't. They store berries in their bellies. You're getting facts wrong that even kindergartners would know. You gotta be kidding me. First a little Red Riding Hood joke, and now three bears? Let me guess, someone's been sleeping in my cave, and there they are! Then the bears plop down right in the doorway. Um, you want to get a little deeper into the cave where you have a better chance at keeping warm? Or are you going to do that after your next round of foraging tomorrow? You then go back to the other wolves, where they're all sleeping peacefully. Yeah, yeah. Marcel, your swing is starting to look like you're bowling. Marcel... Sorry about your wing. I had no idea Goose tasted so good. Mm, better than the duck I just ate. Oh, these movies are horrible. Oh, why won't they stop? I think Florida is a perfect place for an older wolf to live. Then the pups just wander off. Who saw that coming? Tell me, Kate Humph, which one of you Parents of the Year taught the kids that? We gotta take things into our own paws. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure of anything. Future leader of the pack, ladies and gentlemen. Stinky, you have an incredible sense of smell and can find anyone. Claudette, you have an amazing ability to throw off predators. They take one look at her and they lose their appetites. And Runt, you bring calm to chaos. When did that ever happen? Is there some movie I haven't seen where Runt is witness to a hostage situation and he gets the gunman to calm down? If that movie exists, please let me know! It sounds a lot more interesting than everything else these freaks have been in. So they begin the search for their parents, and suddenly it occurs to me, why did Humphrey go with Kate in the first place? Didn't they get lost hunting for caribou? Shouldn't she be out with Winston or Garth? Humphrey's supposed to be the stay-at-home dad while Kate is the breadwinner, 
as we've seen in movie three. Wait a minute, did this movie just make me say that the Great Wolf Games actually did something right? I'm picking up a scent! What you got, bro? <sighs> what? Wait! I'm picking up... Brent! My best bear, bro! Oh, for God's sake. Why does it have to be Brent, his best bear, bro? Lily's already been established, so why couldn't we just have the pups run into her? Yeah, that little flashback we had before? That's the one and only time we see Lily in this movie. The fans have been demanding for more Lily and or Garth, and that's all we're getting. Fuck this movie. Fuck it with both fists. And we still haven't seen anything happening between Stinky and Brent that would warrant him calling him his best bear bro. He was nothing but a side character that frankly should not have happened, not when the two movies before it had a better handle on doing bear cub characters. Yeah, let's talk about Brent for a minute. I'm sorry to pause from the movie, but I gotta get this off my chest. There were two other bear cubs in the first and second movies, and all they did was fulfill the little roles that the plot demanded of them. Then came Brent in movie number three. The writers decided he needed to have mental health issues to deal with, they gave him a speech impediment, and they paired him up with a porcupine guardian. They decided to make Brent a bear with special needs, and they also decided to make him f***ing stupid. What exactly was the point of adding that bit of unnecessary cruelty to these movies? Are they trying to say that mental health issues or speech impediments automatically make someone stupid? Even South Park has more class than to imply something as insulting as that. Wait a minute. That isn't Brent. That's a... a polar bear? Wow. It's way off course. <laughs> Wait. Brent's smell. It's coming from the polar bear. Oh my gosh, he, he ate Brent, and I'm smelling him inside the polar bear's belly! My god, you're stupid! Have you ever smelled anything just as you were done eating it? Why would you suddenly think you could do that now? Oh, Brent, poor grizzly. He didn't make it to spring. He'll never see a salmon run again. He'll never experience ripping a door off a car! Brent was a homicidal maniac who never got to realize his dream of ripping some poor camper to shreds! No, it's not a polar bear. Of course it's not. It's just Brent. Brent, you're supposed to be in hibernation. You've been sleepwalking again. And sleep standing around for several hours to let him get covered in snow? Why are you three out so late? We're on our way to find our parents. We think they're trapped in the eastern region. Why don't we help them? Because nobody wants you around! That's why! Your mother will kill me for letting you go across the country. Yes, my mother is in hibernation for three months. She'll never know. Let's do this! Yeah! Mm. Okay, we're in. That's a nice, responsible social worker for you. Two days after the last time we saw them, Kate Hump finally get the idea to sneak past the bears because they were too stupid to think of it before now. Wait a minute, why would they even decide to stay in this cave in the first place? Wouldn't this cave be swimming in bear stink? So much so that even the Omega would think that staying here would be a bad idea? <laughs> ah, did you see that? Humphrey had to keep Kate from going any further because he's the one with the penis, which means he has to protect her from making stupid decisions. <laughs> These are not the wolves you're looking for. And they go back into the cave! Why would they go back into the cave? Did they somehow miss the exit which was right f***ing there?! How did you do that thing with the bear? Watch. You think I am the studliest wolf in the valley. No, I don't. Keep trying. We jump back to the wolf pups sliding across some ice, and it finally hits me why they made this movie take place during a particularly frozen winter. They did it to cut back on the animation. Walk cycles too time consuming? Just have them slide across some ice. Problem solved. Speaking of, it's bad enough that these movies are visually bland with their constantly recycled sets and characters, but now everything is covered in white and fogged over with more white. I know we needed to take a step back from the visual insanity of a dinosaur dancing in a water show, but this is the other extreme. Hmm. Would you look at what we have here? Oh goody! King from movie number two is back! 
I do love it when a movie admits that it has absolutely no original ideas, so all I can do is recycle old ones. I'm so hungry, <laughs> I could eat a wolf. Took the words right out of my mouth. I'm suddenly reminded of the old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. At this point, all I can say is, GO KING GO! So my new bestest friend in the whole wide world starts to give chase. Wait, it's the king and his henchwolf! The ones that kidnapped me last winter! Last winter. Okay. So, in-universe, the second movie happened exactly a year ago, and all the movies that happened between then and now happened within the course of that year. No, seriously, let's work out the time scale for these movies. Alpha and Omega 2 happens in December one year ago, and Alpha and Omega 7 is happening in December of this year. After 2 comes Alpha and Omega 3, which is happening in the late winter, early spring, since it's trying to be an allegory for the Sochi Winter Games. Then we get Alpha and Omega 4 taking place the following fall. You may notice that the movies don't number themselves after the third movie. As such, you might be tempted to think that maybe these movies are being told out of sequence, kind of like Star Wars, and seeing as how family vacations usually happen during the summer anyway, it would only make sense to put Alpha and Omega Family Vacation during the summer between Alpha and Omega 3 and Alpha and Omega 4. Unfortunately, Family Vacation includes the porcupines from Shadow Forest from Alpha and Omega 4 and Fleet from Alpha and Omega 3, and we're left putting Alpha and Omega 5 with what is probably a summer setting after Alpha and Omega 4 and before Alpha and Omega 7. And since the trappers from Alpha and Omega 5 are present in Alpha and Omega 6, we're left with only one conclusion. All of these movies are happening in the same sequence in which they were released, meaning that a typical year in Jasper has winter, spring, summer, fall, and then another summer before going back into winter again. Apparently Canada works on a different time scale from the rest of the planet. Anyway, our brave stalwart heroes try to rid the world of the evil wolf pups. <laughs> hey look, Brent learned ventriloquism. <laughs> what up? What are you doing? What mom would do? Taking one of them out! Yeah. Ah, look at that. Meals on wheels. And I didn't even order room service. <laughs> it's time for an airstrike. You're not Sonic the Hedgehog! So the kids pull off a bunch of impossible bullshit to make their escape. Then we jump back to Kate Frump, who... are... Trying to jump over the bears? They all know hopscotch. <laughs> and they leapt over. Why don't they just walk around the bears? They've got plenty of space! <laughs> okay. Gotta give the movie this much. At least it's aware of how actual cuteness does indeed exist. If only they could make the wolf pups as cute as this famous picture, then we'd be in business. Oh my gosh, Humphrey. <laughs> you really took one for the team. <laughs> no, I'm the one taking one for the team. You're welcome, Internet. I'm gonna have to go into therapy the minute we get home. That was awful. My little teddy. Hey, how about that salmon run, huh? Did he just pull his paw out from between two pillows? Those aren't pillows. Ah! The wolves stole our food. You sleepy? I'm not sleepy. So not only do the bears suddenly talk when they never talked in any of the movies before now, except they could talk when they were cubs, but they talk like they're from the mob. Are they gonna have to whack a guy? It's gonna be really interesting seeing Stinky and Brent uniting the wolf pack with the bear clan in the next movie, Alpha and Omega, Journey to Bear Kingdom. 
Hey, welcome to the Bad Kingdom, you mook. Forget about it. We cut back to the pups, where Stinky is somehow able to sniff out their parents' scent, despite the copious amounts of snow. Ugh, Stinky, I know your smell is never wrong, but are you sure Mom and Dad went up here? I think he meant to say that his sense of smell is never wrong. Did the voice actor goof up and the director just didn't catch it? Or was that just the writer not writing good? I know what I said! What are you picking up, bro? Down Valley? King and Hench are trailing us. We gotta move! One. How does he smell something that's behind him and downwind? Two. The henchman's name is Hench? What, on the day that he was born, did his parents say, Aw, our little guy's gonna grow up to be the best lucky in the whole gosh darn world. They bump into Lyle and Link, who I guess were wandering around out here in the middle of nowhere because Legos. King convinces them to join his pack because... I don't know, Kate bit their tails and that made them leave her pack because they got their little feelings hurt? Heh. <laughs> we're in the middle of a snowstorm with a couple of snowflakes. Identical snowflakes, no less. Kate, can you pick up on which way the caribou went? The fresh snow is covering their tracks. I can't hear the caribou through the wind. Humphrey, maybe we should get home. Kate, there will be no pack if we don't locate the caribou. There's no pack now. You've had nothing to do with them since the second movie. And again, why is Humphrey the one driving Kate onward? She's supposed to be the mighty hunter, and he is supposed to be the prop comic. Back at home, they finally notice that the pups are missing, and Patty and Marcel set out to follow them. From what I can see, we have about an hour before the eye of that monster storm hits. Why are you worried about being hit by the eye of the storm, and how can you tell it's coming from inside the cave? Don't worry, Winston. We'll get there! Meanwhile, later yesterday afternoon, Stinky is able to smell King, Hench, and the twins, who are all behind them, and the wind is blowing from in front of them! How is that supposed to be possible? They find the bear cave that Kate Humph were hiding in, then we cut back to Kate Humph, who finally tracked down the caribou. Which are trapped somehow? The bears catch up with them, and Kate finally shows some of her original gumption. Sadly, I can't appreciate this return to form, since the situation is resolved not by Kate kicking ass and taking names, but by Humphrey whipping up another log sled. Jump, Kate! <gasps> it's comforting to know that if you're trying to think of something clever, but you're just out of ideas, there's always a place for you on the Alpha and Omega writing staff. Meanwhile, King's Peck catches up to the pups. I see the wolf tracks. I also see bear tracks. But I don't see the pups. Does it look like the bear ate them? I'm not sure. Hey, you know what would be really interesting? Watching Lyle actually see these things as he's describing them. I think I smell others back here. Alive! Oh no! It's a bear! Run! Sure's a good thing you had that spotlight, or else that effect wouldn't work at all. Guys, just like my nose said, caribou. Seriously, Stinky, they should have brought you. They should have brought all of us. What they should have done is smother you all the second that Kate was done shitting you out! Somehow, the pups are perfectly capable of seeing the chase between their parents and the bears when they should have been long gone by now. And we left! We left! And wait a minute, how the hell did they end up behind the bears? Uh, Dishonored Wolf, what do you think? Physics! 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 Humphrey, the tree! Oh, stay with me, guy. Come on, we were just cuddle buddies, remember? Gotcha! And how did the bears crash into the tree, but Kate Humph didn't? Weren't the bears sitting on their log right along with them? Space is warped and time is bendable. Go, Mom! Go, Dad! <sighs> okay, who let the dogs out? <sighs> What would Mom and Dad do? What would Mom and Dad do? Oh, wait. We know what they do! They're doing it! 
it! Do dead, hollowed-out trees just naturally grow like that? What the f***? Because these strips of bark are deeply rooted into the ground, Claudette has to distract them while the other kids pull it out. Link! Lyle! Get her! Well, if it isn't Link and Lyle, traitors to the end! Get her, brother! She's too tricky! I thought you two were trained by Winston and Tony! We were! But she was trained by Kate! Yeah, and Kate was trained by Winston and no one else! You really should have the upper hand here! I think she's faster than Kate! You're catching up to her! Get in, everyone! I'll push! I'm about to lose my berries! <laughs> You know, at least the first movie was kind enough for Humphrey to swallow his lunch before he lost it. Did you really need to go there, big furries? Ah! You're getting as good as Dad! Wait a minute. That's stinky. Are you telling me that these animators are so apathetic about their work that they couldn't even tell Stinky from Runt? Even with his longer hair in these last two movies, these animators confused Stinky for Runt? Give me your keys, animators. You're too drunk to draw. The pups have almost caught up with their folks, but oh my goodness, there's a train about to hit them and we're supposed to be frightened by this, I think. Oh gosh, a vehicle oncoming! You mean an oncoming vehicle. Have these writers ever written anything before in their lives? They make it past the train, and it looks as though they've met their fates. But I have no idea how we're supposed to buy this when we've already seen them survive much worse in the last movie. And where the first movie treated Kate's alleged death with all sincerity, this movie has the kids pop out of the snow like they're in a game of whack-a-mole. God, I love being an editor. Why did you come and find us? Are you crazy? We had to come find you. Please don't be mad. It wasn't an option to stay back. We know how helpless and stupid you are. Why? Mom, you're seriously asking why? Take a look around. Because it's snowing? Because there are trees? Because Brent and Agnes are here when nobody wanted them to be? What are we looking around here for? So they begin their long journey home without bringing any caribou with them. Remember? The caribou that they were desperately hunting which brought them out here in the first place? Then Runt... Uh... Does... Whatever the hell this is. Just long enough for King to come back and make one last ditch effort for his revenge. And then he and his wolves get pelted by a Patty and Marcel playing golf. Because why the hell would we want to see Kate tear into them for threatening the life of her child? That'd just be silly! Are the wolves made of coconuts? Where are those sound effects coming from? Oh wait, I forgot that cats are made of crepe paper. So yeah, I guess wolves would be made of coconuts. My god, are you still catching up to Runt? He was only like 10 feet behind you! So King runs off like a little bitch. They all get the caribou back to their den somehow. And what's keeping them from running away again? And they celebrate the holidays, which involves them growing bushes inside their cave somehow, vomiting blood on each other, and playing grab ass, I guess. So that was Alpha and Omega the Big Furries. It sucked, are you surprised? The animation is terrible. The pups are all as annoying as ever, the plot is boring and paper thin, the jokes aren't funny, the writing is crap, the fact that they made this into another Christmas movie that has nothing to do with Christmas is completely baffling, Kate and Humphrey have once again been rendered completely useless in their own franchise, it teases us with a single shot of Lily and nothing else, and lest we forget, this is the movie that Splash Entertainment wanted us to wait for. This is the movie for which they were pulling out all the stops. 
I guess I should point out how the one thing it has in its favor is that it isn't completely batshit insane by including something as ridiculous as a magical dancing dinosaur, but I'm hesitant to do so out of fear of sounding like I'm giving this movie some kind of endorsement, and that's the last thing that I want to do. Just like with every sequel in this godforsaken series, I urge you to stay away from this piece of shit. And now it's time for me to go have Thanksgiving dinner with my family. But before I do... I need to give a very dear friend of mine a very special treat.